Firebase is a back-end as a service, a BAS platform provided by Google that offers a range of tools and services for building mobile and web applications. It includes features such as real-time databases, user authentication, hosting, online cloud storage, and much more. Now, it's absolutely free to use for small-scale mobile apps, but of course, as your usage increases, you can upgrade to a paid plan for an increased level of service. So now the question is, is why would you want to use a backend as a service platform? Well, if your mobile application needs to use some or all these types of features, building something yourself would need a whole host of technical skills. Now, believe you me, I've been there, right? So um, the simple option here is to use a pre-built trusted service such as Firebase to accelerate your mobile application development. So this means that you can then focus on kind of all the good stuff um, and, and kind of get your hand, your, your app into the hands of users much, much more quickly. So in this short video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to create a new project in Firebase. We'll then set up and construct a very, very simple mobile app in Flutterflow, which will then pull your data in and then display it on the screen. Now, it's intended as a quick start guide, but if you are interested in learning how to build mobile apps, please watch my full progressive series on my channel where I'll teach you how to be, build mobile apps using this awesome no code tool. So are we ready then? Let's get our hands dirty and of course, feel free to follow along as well. Okay, so head over to firebase.google.com. If you haven't already got an account, please do create one. I've already created my account, so I'm ready to go. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create our Firebase project. So just go up to the top right here, click on go to console, and we're presented on the console home screen. So this is where we can start creating our project. So we're gonna click on create project. So we're gonna name our project a product shop. Keep it nice and simple, hit continue. We're not gonna use Google Analytics at this particular time. We'll explain more about what Google Analytics is in future videos. We're just gonna turn that off, hit create project. So this is gonna take a little while, just, just maybe a minute or two, and we'll be right back. Okay, so our project is now created in Firebase. Let's hit continue. Okay, so we've entered the project home screen. This is where you can now access um, various features of Firebase. In this particular video, we're gonna keep it really, really simple and we're gonna cut straight to the chase and we're gonna start creating our data. This is the data that is gonna be displayed with inside our mobile application with inside Flutterflow. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go up to the build accordion here. We're just gonna drop that down. We're gonna click on the Firestore database. So in just a moment, this will come up and this will now give us a chance to create the database. So here it is, just hit create database. And on this dialog box, um, we can either have production mode or test mode. Of course, we're just developing our applications, so we're going to keep it in test mode for now. We're just going to hit that, hit next. Um, this is the location to where your, um, your, your Firebase uh, database is going to be uh, located. So um, you've got some choices here. I'm in Europe, so I'm just going to select Europe and hit enable. Of course, feel free to choose a location which is closer to where you are. So in just a moment, it's going to complete. There we go. Right, I'm just gonna close some of these down. We don't need to worry too much about that. So this is where we're now gonna start creating our products. But in order for us to create our products, we need to actually have a collection. So this collection is like a bucket where we're gonna kind of put all of our products in, and this will allow us to then perform a query into um, Firebase to then say, right, return me back all of our products, and it will literally bring them back as a collection. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna hit Start Collection, and we're gonna give this a collection ID. So we're gonna call it product, keep it really, really simple, hit next, and then we're gonna be required to then start creating our documents. The documents will create, will, will kind of be our product. So in here, um, each of our product is gonna have a title, of course, and um, we're gonna call this, um, this one Waffle Maker for, as an example. So each of our product is gonna have a, or it's gonna be in a category. So we've got category, and so we're just gonna say this is kitchen, and we're gonna add a, a final one called price. Now a price is um, not a string. These two here that we've got our class as strings, they're, they're text. We're gonna change this to a number because it's gonna be a price. So for our waffle maker, I'm gonna say this is 35.99. Now, every document that we actually create with inside 
Firebase and we need to give it an, uh, an ID. And the ID we'll be using in future videos to kind of pull back a specific product from our products. So I'm just gonna choose simply Auto ID for now. I hit Save. So there's our first one just there. We can see here that we've got our products collection. We've got a single product, which is inside the products collection. And on the right hand side here, we can see the fields that we've just created. So we're now gonna create another product with inside our products collection. So I'm just gonna hit add document. So again, I'm gonna give this a title and I'm gonna say it's a running machine. Okay, and we're gonna add another one here. And again, this will be in a category and we'll we can put this into the fitness category hit add field and we are gonna give this a price again as before it's a number and our running machine is going to be 350 as an example okay we're going to give this an auto id hit save and there we go off our running machine is now being created we're just going to do one more so we're going to going to have a title and this is going to be a kettle. Let's add another category. And we're going to put this in the kitchen category. And we are going to also have a price. Um, and we're going to give this a price of, say, $29.99. Uh, oh, whoops. Uh, there we go. Must be a number, of course. $29.99. There we go. Another auto ID. And we're going to save it. So there we go. So we've got all three products with inside our products collection. Right, so now that we've got all of our products now created, the next step is to configure Firebase to allow Flutterflow to, to access the um, our project with inside Firebase. So the best way to do that is that first we're gonna enable authentication, okay? So we're just gonna click on the build, we're gonna click on authentication. And then we're gonna hit the get started button. And all we're gonna to need to do here is we need to set email authentication. So we're just gonna select email and password. We're gonna just enable it there and hit save. There we go. So next up, what we need to do is we need to now um, set up Flutterflow as an editor to our project. So the simple way to do that is to click on the cog that's just there. We're gonna to go to users and permissions. As you can see, I'm there myself. Um, I also need to add an additional member. Hit add member. So this is going to be Firebase at Flutterflow.io. And quite simply, they're going to be an editor. We're just going to hit done. Hit add member. Right, so now that we've got our Firebase at Flutterflow user created as an editor within our Firebase project, we are now ready to go to Flutterflow now and to start building our project. And what we're going to need to do there is we're going to need to do some configuration before we can start building the UI. So we will be coming back to Firebase just to grab a few details from there to take back to Flutterflow. But I think we can now start getting ready now to build our mobile project. So we're just gonna go over to the projects uh, um, section within inside Flutterflow. So of course, if you haven't created a Flutterflow account, please do so. Um, it's it, What will happen is, is you'll be presented with this kind of this sort of empty sort of projects area, and we can now start building our project. So quite simply, I'm gonna hit the create new here, and we're gonna give our project within inside Flutterflow the same names we, we did with Firebase and call it product shop. You can have what it, whichever name that you would like. We're going to hit create new. Now this is the, um, this is quite important. This bit is here. And of course we'll explain more about what this means in the, in the main course. Um, but for now, um, we're just going to keep it very, very simple. And I'm going to put my name there as the, as the digital pro, and then we're going to give this the name of product shop, all lowercase as our package name. And we'll explain more about how that would work in the in, in the main project. Now, for now, we're not going to um, set up Firebase. We're going to come back and do that manually. So I'm just going to switch that off, and I'm going to say start building. So now we are presented with the Flutterflow um, UI builder, but we're just going to now make some changes elsewhere in the product. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to the cog just down there. We're going to click on Firebase and we're just going to now have to go and obtain our Firebase project ID. This is kind of this is the first stage of kind of hooking up Flutterflow with Firebase. So we're just going to go back to Firebase. We're going to go up to the general tab. Of course, if you don't quite see project settings, make sure you click on the cog. We're going to go to general and our our product ID is right here. So we're just going to kind of grab that. We're just going to copy that to the clipboard. We're going to go back to the Flutterflow project. We're just going to paste it in here. There it is. We're going to click connect. 
So now that we've got our project ID set, let's click on auto generate config files. I'm just gonna click this here. So we're just gonna give this a moment to complete. So now that we've got this set up, there's just one more piece of configuration that we need to do. If we just head on over to the Firestore option here, we just need to validate our Firebase schema. So we're just gonna click this here and what this will do is this will just check to make sure that what we got set up in Flutterflow is the same as what we got set up in Firebase. It should come back successful. So once this is done, all we gotta do now is deploy our Firestore rules. I'm just gonna hit the deploy option here. And hit deploy now. And we are good to go. Just one thing to add here though, if you hit an error at this particular point, let me tell you how to fix it. So go over to Firebase, and if you go to the uh, cog at the top here, and you go to project settings, check to make sure that you have your location set within here. If you haven't, there'll be a little pen to the side here, just select that. You don't need to change anything on the dialog box that comes up, just hit the OK button or the button that's there on the right hand side and that will get that all sorted for you. You can go back to Flutter and then you can then try submitting once again. You just need to come back here and go to deploy and it should work OK for you at that point. Right, we're now ready to build the UI of our mobile application. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the UI builder option here on the left-hand side, and what you're presented with is the home screen of our mobile application. So what we now need to do is we now need to create a list view. We need to drag a list view from the left-hand side actually into the main center section of our application. And what the list view will do, it will allow us to connect to our Firebase backend, it will allow us to query for our products, and then what it allows us to do is it allows us to build up the UI elements that will display the detail, like the title, the category, and the price um, of our product. So let's simply just drag a list view here over to the column. So simple drag and drop. And now we have our list view in the in the column. What we now need to do is we now need to choose this option here called backend query. So we click that. We choose add backend query and you, you'll you be able to see here that we what we're going to do is we're going to query our collection, which is the collection that we've kind of created previously in Firebase. Click on query collection. We're going to choose products because it's the only one that we've told Flutterflow about the, in the previous steps that we did. So I'm just going to choose products. We don't need to choose anything else. We're just going to hit confirm and we're going to hit confirm there and we are in a good position. So all we now need to do is now start building out the UI elements that's now gonna display the detail of our products. So I'm gonna go over here, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna choose a template that Flutterflow has already got in its kind of library. There's lots of different templates that we can use as a starter. So I'm just gonna scroll down, um, and we're gonna find a one that is gonna be suitable for us, probably in the car view section. So I just scroll down here. I know that there's one just down here called uh, user list two this one here there we go there's a little preview so this is ideal this shows us we've got a title we've got a bit of gray text there which could be used for our category and then we've got the price perfect for what we need so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag that over into our list view and it will be positioned just there of course what we're seeing just below that and the kind of slightly grayed out is I'm um, really just a preview it's just kind of showing you that this is a list of, of, of items so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hover my mouse over here and this is just a text field and you can see here it's got a bit of static text in here but what we want to do is we want to pull the actual title of our product from our collection of products so there's a little option just above it called set from variable and because um, this piece of um, sort of custom uh, sort of UI that we've pulled in um, is actually contained with inside our list view, um, it knows that it's a product. That And so quite simply, we can go down here and we can see products document. So we can just click on that and it knows that we have a title. So I'm just going to choose title. Then I'm going to go over to the other piece of gray text there and I'm going to say set from variable. I'm going to go to products and I'm going to choose category. And finally, I'm gonna click on our price. I'm gonna go set variable. I'm gonna to go to products document and I'm gonna choose price. And I'm gonna say confirm. So there we go. So we should have everything we need. So the next step is, well, how do we make this, um, how do we make this actually work? So um, really, really straightforward. What we just now need to do is simply use the Flutterflow, um, sort of like the, the test mode uh, feature. Um, by clicking this, what this will do is this will spin up a, a, a test application and we can actually see it actually working in, in, in the real life. So here we go. Let's click on that. 
So as you can see, this is now firing up our testing session. So we're just gonna leave this for two to three minutes to fire up. Once it actually is loaded and it's working, we can keep it in a tab and we can come back and use it again and again and again while we're developing our application. So I'll be back in just a moment when this is complete. So there you go, our mobile application has spun up. As you can see there, we've got three products. What we're going to do now, though, is we're going to test it. We're going to create another product. Now, we can do this um, one of two ways. We can do this in Flutterflow, or we can actually do it with inside Firebase. Now, for this one, we're going to do it in Firebase, and then we'll come back here, and hopefully, we'll see our product listed. So let's go back to our Firebase project. We're going to click on Firestore Database, and we're going to create another document. So here we go. So we know that we're using title. And let's say this is ski poles. Okay, we're gonna go into the category and we're gonna say, put this on holiday. We're gonna add another field in and it's gonna be price. And of course, remember this is a number and we're just gonna put 43 in there like that. We're gonna give it an auto ID. We're gonna hit save. And there you have it. We have our additional document with inside our products collection. So now hopefully we can go now back to our mobile app and we will see an extra one in there, which we do. So it looks like we're all good. We're in sync. I mean, that's the power of Firebase. It allows you to kind of make these data changes and you kind of see those, those updates happen and occur instantly. And what's really nice about this particular um, sort of like this kind of preview session is you can kind of keep this to one side, maybe have another monitor. You can kind of keep on another monitor. You can be building your UI up within inside Flutterflow, and then you can see instant changes, which is absolutely fantastic. So the other way um, we could actually add documents actually is if we go back to Flutterflow itself, and I'm just gonna go down here to the Firestore um, option, and I'm gonna go and click on this particular, on the collections bit, and we can go to manage content. So let's bring this up, and you'll see here we should have our four products listed. I'm just gonna click on add document. So here, I'm just gonna put in a title of say, uh, I don't know, computer parts. And of course, I'm gonna put a category maybe of just computing and then a price, say 23, hit add document. And I can simply then go back to our test mode and there it is, our computer parts are there. So there you have it. There's a very, very brief introduction to Firebase connected to Flutterflow. I hope you found that really, really useful. If you're interested in watching the full course on my channel, please do subscribe. Please go and have a look at the rest of our series designed for total beginners who've never kind of done any kind of mobile app development before, where we'll kind of walk you through right from the start, right to the finish, and hopefully it will springboard you to creating your dream mobile app. Please do like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much.